how many times in different ways I could say the same fucking thing over and over again. They've always been about politics from day one. And how the hell we got here, like how everything, why everything has become so political. I, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it. And I'm not saying that there's not enough room for people to espouse political opinions. Keep in mind, he claims to be a big fan of comic books throughout the ages. Like, surely he read, you know, the Golden Age, the Silver Age, um, the very early books where Batman literally murdered people or he gunned them down with guns, right? Like, he remembers all that, and he's just not, like, LARPing as one. Like, he just read, like, the recent ones and assumed, like, yeah, I'm a super fan. I read all the good ones. And then, like, he just ignored, like, every fucking comic book that existed before he started reading them. Opinions, or for people to create uh, comics for uh, underrepresented groups. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't like every damn thing in the comic book industry becoming. It's not. It's literally the case that these guys think anything that isn't like white, straight, dude, number three, generic. If it's not that is the main character and that and like the white, generic woman, number one as, like, the fucking love interest. Anything outside of that is political to these guys. Comic books haven't changed. They're not more political than they used to be. It's not more overt. It's not more subtle. It's, it's the same. It's always the same. They are exactly the same as they were back in the day. Go look at some of them comic books. They deal with some pretty heavy issues. For fuck's sake, X-Men was all about people being discriminated against. It was literally a commentary on that. Mutants are treated like fucking worthless pieces of garbage. It was meant to point out that as a society, we do that to people anyway, and it's wrong. Being political, everything, you know, the comics themselves, the creators, um, the promotion of the comics. You know, the dude who made um, Superman punch a Nazi and, like, fight Hitler, that guy was totally not political. He had no politics whatsoever. They didn't exist. It wasn't a thing back then. It, it came out of nowhere, really, in the 1990s for some reason. Everything is is political. The media outlets that support publishers, everyone is absolutely obsessed with politics and virtue signaling. And and uh... no, you're just an idiot. Um, there is no such thing as apolitical. Everything is political. Everything has a side. You're just mad that like your side is not popular. Uh, you know, it's become very divisive. It's become very hateful. Uh, comics. I mean, the only hate I'm seeing is from guys like him. Let's be honest. I'm not seeing many like progressives like crying and like demanding people be fired and fucking throwing hissy fits every time a new comic book comes out. This is not fun anymore. You know, the only thing worse than comics at this point, I think, is tabletop gaming. God, tabletop gaming has has gone completely insane. And the thing is that people do turn. Wait, what? What's insane about tabletop? I mean, yeah, the prices are pretty fucking bad for some, but I don't see the problem with it. ...into these kinds of hobbies to get away from the real world. I mean, we're living in a dystopian nightmare right now. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, we're living a science fiction film. Uh, we are, and it gets uh, seemingly worse every month. Um, you know, it's just more and more ridiculous. And, uh, you know, maybe it's just that, you know, comics and the comic book industry are reflecting, you know, the anxiety and... Um, you know, hatred that we're feeling in the real world. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. But it's really depressing. I wonder if he realized the inherent political statement he just made. That our media is a reflection in which we are feeling in the current age. Does, does he know that he just kind of answered his own questions when he said that? Like, our politics is in our media. That is, that is how we create things. We put our politics, our beliefs into our art so of course our popular culture our media is going to reflect whatever it is the artist is feeling at the time the social norms that kind of thing it's going to be reflective within our media how does he not know this and uh, i'm going to talk about this uh, a little bit more couple couple things here i i feel like the comic book industry is being held up uh, for ransom for sure and you know speaking of which uh, diamond has has been hit by a ransomware attack. I don't even understand why anybody would go after Diamond because they really don't have anything of value anymore. 
Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. But really what kicked this off was uh, oh. going back to Superman again. Yeah, they have nothing whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. When your head is so far up your own fucking narrative that you say something that fucking ignorant, you, you would think he would just implode upon himself, right? And it, it's not about the bisexual Superman or DC Comics virtue signaling or anything like that, but it is. Uh, it is in, in some way. The former colorist of Superman, uh, Gabe El Taib, I think his name is, uh, had some parting words for Jim Lee when he left. And I never thought we would get to this place because I remember when I first started reading comics in the you know 1980s, um, you know, independent comics and the comic book scene in general was a lot of people working in comics. A lot of creators were advocates for freedom of speech. That was a big deal. And there, look, there were some comic book creators back then that had some really crazy ideas, but whatever. You read their books, and for the most part, people didn't know what their opinions were. And then, then came social media. Now, uh, you. I mean, if you read their books, you would know because that's reflected in their art. Again, it's just that you guys don't have the ability to look at something and understand the underlying themes. I mean, for fuck's sake, I keep bringing it up. They thought Rise Against the Machine was a non-political band. And for those of you who don't know, Rise Against the Machine is very political. Hey guys, um, this band, totally apolitical. You can't escape the opinions of creators. In fact, I've, I've told people if they want to enjoy comic books or any kind of uh, creative medium at this point, I, I would suggest you don't follow your favorite comic book creators, uh, your favorite uh, you know, showrunners on animated series, uh, people who work on role-playing games or video games that you enjoy, because you're going... Is he eating when he's making these videos? It sounds like he's trying to, like, tongue a fucking candy or something when he's doing this. It's, it's very weird. I can't stop not listening to it. To see a lot of shit that you wish you could unsee because it's going to taint your opinion of their work. Um, you know, people are absolutely allowed to express their opinions for sure, but, you know... You know, unless they disagree with you, then you cry about it. You no, know, it's, it's just gotten more and more toxic. DC Comics has been kind of at the center of of a lot of this lately and and it's, it's so weird because i remember a couple of years ago everybody was like well marvel's kind of you know kind of gotten very political and they've made some questionable decisions but dc's still holding holding strong and then they brought in daniel cherry the uh, third who is an admitted activist and then everything has become activist focused of course it has you know we did a video talking before about uh, you know superman and how remember he claims to be a fan of comic books who t he definitely knows a lot about comic books, the creators, the history behind them, the storylines, the themes. He definitely understands those. And it's not all, ooh, he's, he's, he's wearing bright colors. He must be good guy, right? He, he good guy. He smash, he smash robot smash. I like he. Because me baby who don't like themes. Me want safe. Now, uh, uh, Ethan Van Skyver believes... Um, Superman's being changed up to John Kent so they can skip out on paying royalties to Schuster and Siegel's families, which is possible. I mean, I'm not going to say it's not possible. This is totally possible. But um, I'm going to I'm going to read this article here from Bounding in the Comics, talking about uh, Gabe El Taib leaving Superman and parting words he had for Jim Lee. And Jim Lee, I used to think. You know, Jim Lee and Eric Larson, I used to think, were, you know, a couple of the good guys. These were guys that were, you know, uh, huge names in comics back when I first started reading comics regularly. And, and uh, you know, I always thought Larson especially was an advocate for free speech. I don't think he really is. Um, he disagrees with me. Therefore, he must be an enemy. Like this absolutist, if you don't agree with every opinion I hold, you are the enemy shit. Unironically. Um, but, you know, all of this weird shit going on in the comic book industry right now, it's just, it's depressing as hell. And you can't get away from it. Like, you try to get away from it. You're like, well, I'm just going to go make my own comics, my own little corner of the internet. And they follow you over there. They do. We've seen it happen. They follow us. What you doing? What you doing? You making comics? Mm, you must be comic skating. Mm, what you doing there? Mm -hmm. How much money did you make? Yeah. Or, you know, blacklisted from events. So Who the fuck follows you or cares about your comic book? I mean, I've looked into it. It's, it's pretty generic. Why, who cares? 
D- does he mean like people find his comic books and have opinions on it that he doesn't like? Is that what is that what the, is this just him being salty that people didn't like his comic book? Or, you know, just dumb shit, just dumb dumb shit, and it's depressing. It's depressing. Let let's talk about this because I actually I agree with uh, Gabe El Taib here. Now you don't have to work for any company you don't want to work for. You know we've talked about this before with uh, you know employees working at Spotify and Kickstarter having problems with the uh, content being produced on those platforms, you know, and, and image comics wanting to unionize the comic book industry is being held hostage. The readers are being held hostage by politics. It's just, it's, it's awful. Aren't you tired of it? And I'm tired of them, but I mean, I gotta tell you the truth. I'm tired of it on both sides. Just cause you don't like all the politics and comics doesn't mean Wait. you necessarily are going to agree he, he with. He wasn't even know. fired or anything. He, he left because his contract was up. He just re- didn't renew it. They were acting like he was canceled when they fucking left. Comics that are just all espousing right-wing politics or whatever. It's just like, can we just, like, tell good stories and not... By good stories, he means safe baby stories that have no conflict, no tension, um, no themes. It has to be, like, Teletubbies level shit. Anything beyond that is political for him. This shit off. You know, and I think it's just with comics, I think they almost need the drama because they're losing so much ground to manga. Uh, they're losing so much ground. Okay, I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand. I'm going to make it as blatantly clear as possible here. One is weekly. One is monthly. Now, if you put something out every week and somebody else puts something out once a month, now... How many weeks are in a month? Yeah, you're going to sell more stuff if you put it out weekly than if you put it out once per month. These are also not competing businesses. We're acting like these, these companies compete with each other. They don't. You can, you can watch both. You can, you can participate in both. There's nothing stopping you. They're not competing any more than any other like paperback media. Like books are a competitor in this particular situation. Because they just meet the definition of being printed media. You, you can't compare them. They are incomparable because of how they are put out. Show me a comic book that comes out weekly compared to a manga coming out weekly. And then maybe we can kind of compare them based on how much they sell. You, you can't compare a weekly with a monthly. It's just completely different amount of content coming out. So the sales are going to be vastly different video games, other forms of entertainment, the mainstream comic book industry, and it's almost like they have to shock and anger people to get people to care. And eventually people are just going to walk away completely. They're going to be like, screw all this. You know, screw all of this. I'm, 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 I'm out. I'm tired of the drama. Uh, I'm, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of being held hostage by people over freaking politics and freaking comic books. It's so ridiculous. Anyway, Gabe El Taib. I mean, you're an adult man, I assume. You claim to have kids. You can say fuck. You don't have to say freaking like a two-year-old, you fucking infant. Uh, They don't appear to actually be going down. Interesting. So these guys are like a third party. They appear to be fairly accurate. All right, I'm just going to assume that they're accurate because they do appear to be accurate. 2013. 870 million, right? Check this out. 2020. 1.28 1.28 billion. We saw a dip in 2017 and then a rise. But overall, the trend is going up, not down. So to claim that they're not selling anything, that they're going down in value, is hilarious to me. Like, every piece of data I can find substantiates this. They're going up here, not down. Coming from bounding in the comics, by the way. Uh, get- uh, you know, it's unreliable beyond all belief, and it's probably politicized out the ass. This is literally like the bright part of comic news. I've caught them making up stories. Dave El Taib, colorist working on Superman, son of Kal-El, who recently announced his intention to walk away from DC after his contract was up. Uh, due to the change in Superman's motto was revealed what his parting words were to his once-esteemed publisher. Um, 
Yeah, so this is what he said in the video. Oh and I'll, I'll put if your character was so fucking sad and pathetic that a motto change ruined it, your character was shit, son. If that's all it took, you didn't care about the character. You you didn't. I'm sorry. The character was crap, and you didn't care about him if that's what it takes to ruin it. I'll put a link. I'll put a link to that in the comments. Uh, he said that he actually wrote to Jim Lee. I'd just like to point out that we've gone over this before. This isn't even his original motto. They've changed it like a half a dozen times. Um, you know, El Taib used a football analogy. So if you're not directly coaching, you're allowing things to play out. I.e. losses and players' missteps are caused by failure of leadership. I don't think there's any leadership at DC Comics or Marvel. I think they're just existing. El Taib doesn't know or even hazard to guess if DC is coaching or allowing the woke agenda to proliferate. Pretty big indication that you're dealing with a biased article is when they use phrases like woke agenda. Instead of just saying, like, they're being progressive, if they say woke like this, probably not going to be reliable. You might want to skip it. He's not part of the executive meetings, and his words, they're above his pay grade. Again, Jim Lee does not need to be working for DC Comics. Jim Lee could go out on his own, start his own company again. Uh, look at Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane's still making millions and millions of dollars. And Jim Lee kind of noped out and just sold. Todd McFarlane, well known for not being political at all. <laughs> you know what? I'll put the articles back up because I cannot put him up enough. He keeps bringing him up like he, he, like, I don't think he realizes that the dude is like now one of the woke and is therefore bad for his side of the fence. Old Wildstorm to, to DC. You know, he took the, the easier path. Uh, he moved on to disclose his side of a conversation he had with DC publisher Jim Lee via text messages, uh, but prefaced this revelation by urging his supporters not to go after Lee because he's a good family man who El Taib respects. Yeah, I don't think anybody should be harassed or doxxed or any of that stuff. And yet you've perpetrated it several times yourself. In fact, in the last video I covered from these guys where they were complaining about the dislike buttons, they made it very clear it's not about creator feedback, and it's all about publicly shaming people. And no, I'm not going to let that go. It's going to keep being brought up every chance I get because it shows what pieces of shit they are. They don't care about the feedback. They don't care about showing displeasure. It's all about public shaming for them. Uh, adding he wasn't going to divulge what his old boss said back to him out of respect for his privacy and for DC as a company. I'm going to guess it was something on the lines of, have you read an old comic book before ever in your life? Probably it wouldn't have played well. Let me put it to you that way. Um, he said that uh, El Taib stated his mission is simply to vent on behalf of fans of his, of DC, and comics who are picked on by leftist creators and editors. Call them all sorts of is names because they don't have an argument. And you know what happens? If I mean, I have arguments for everything, and every time I've debated somebody into a corner on any platform, they fall back to calling me a traitor, um, telling me I deserve the wall, um, telling me I'm not a good Christian, um, let's not forget, I deserve to be thrown in jail or gassed, which is two of my favorite responses they give. Of course, the slurs, um, constant slurs from them. Um, they don't really have arguments to write. It's, it's like all slurs and stupid. And then when you present an actual argument with evidence, they get mad because it makes them look bad. And so they just get fucking enraged and just spew nonsense. After a while, people just stop caring. They do, and they move on. Uh, one person El Taib didn't hold back on was Bleeding Cool founder Rich Johnston, whom he described to Lee as a piece of human trash or human filth due to his messaging of El Taib for a scoop on what happened between the colorist and DC. Yeah, Johnston is an ambulance chaser for sure. Well, hey, he, he's, he's trying to get the story from you. Yeah. What? Just, what? Why is he complaining about this? You know, every once in a while he he does he does the journalism, but for the most part he is an ambulance chaser, and I think he's actually delighted to watch people's careers burn down because it means, you know, he's he's getting traffic on his blog. Uh, one of these days I'm going to buy that blog. I doubt you could afford it. Also, if he if he's writing a news article, yeah, he's going to reach out to try and get information. That's how news articles work. Well, that's how normal news articles work. Credible news articles work. I know you don't do that. Like, Clownfish TV is all about just making shit up and making assumptions and not talking to anybody and just kind of saying what they feel is the correct thing. But when you're an actual 
journalist or somebody who's trying to get the news, you reach out to talk to people. You try and find the facts of the matter. I mean, the fact that this guy is so angry that somebody just reached out to him to talk is kind of telling of his, like, headspace. More so than anything Rich Johnson has done. <laughs> I don't know. I keep saying that, right? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, this piece of human filth, Rich Johnson is sniffing around to get info from me. I'll tell you, he began his message to Lee. I'm letting you know as a courtesy so you can be prepared and not let Rich hit you too hard. Who knows what he'll say? He is disgusting. Uh, El Taib went on to address his beef with DC over the change in Superman's motto. Even though I'm rightly pissed off at what you guys at DC have done with disrespecting America, I'd never betray you guys like this. I said what I had to say publicly because I'm not a coward. I'm not going to sneak around and talk to morons like Rich Johnston so he can cause chaos. You probably hate me and think I'm a fool, but I couldn't stay silent any longer. Again, this is holding comics hostage. You have to say and do the right thing as a creator, as a fan, or people like Rich Johnston or other you know, bloggers will come after you. You know, it's been proven time. They reached out for a quote, for comment, for a statement. That's not coming after somebody. That's reaching out. You're supposed to do that when writing a story. Time and time again, you're being held hostage. Uh, talking. Uh, does he not know what being held hostage means? Talking about how you know Jim Lee's parents immigrated to America, and how uh, Gabe's parents immigrated, uh, even if the decision to remove the credit American culture had in creating Superman is out of your hands, it's so ungrateful for you to go along with it. I don't think he. That wasn't even the original. It wasn't even the original fucking motto. He has a choice. You know, I'm not saying he couldn't have spoke up, but he probably doesn't have a choice. In an explanation of why the flag meant so much to him. He talked about uh, Gaddafi and his father escaping Gaddafi's socialist hellscape. Uh, talked about Jim Lee's Korean family. Um, talked about... Uh, Wait, why is he talking about somebody else's family? Oh, my God. I'm so fucking stupid. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this right here is why he's not going to tell us the other side of this conversation. I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. This is probably why he's not going to put the other side of the conversation up. Um, you know, putting words and deeds into somebody else's fucking family, not really something you want to do. I would also say that this guy doesn't know what this word means because he's like calling people who are not communist communists. Like, overall, North Korea has more in common with the American right than the communists. Uh, talked about Jim Lee's Korean family. Um, talked about uh, Clark Kent. Uh, great people pay for everything we have with the American way. Show some damn respect. Superman was founded by two Christian farmers from America's heartland. He got his physical abilities from his biological parents, but he got his uh, morality, the thing that actually makes him a hero from the Kents. That's the American way. Uh, no, it's not. The American way would be he uses his powers to exploit everyone around him for fame and glory. Like money and shit, that would be the American way. That is what we really stand for here. And the fact that this guy doesn't seem to understand it kind of tells me he lives in, like, a fairy world. You know, Carlin himself said it best. Like, it's called the American dream because it's not reality, right? That was the point. Um... This guy doesn't seem to live in reality. He lives in like a fantasy world where everybody has the mom, the dad, brother, sister, little dog, white picket fence, um, two-story home, the car. The dad comes home from working all day. His suit's immaculate because, of course, he is, even though he's a factory worker. Um, he walks to the door. The wife, of course, gives him the kiss where her leg shoots up in the back. And then, like, he takes a drink from his beer and thumbs up the camera that's for some reason. that Like, he thinks that's what America is. When it's not, to the comments just now, there are people comparing this to the Weimar Republic. I'm not kidding. Also, look at this. Look at this wording. It gave him everything. You know, you know fuck this guy's talent. Um, fuck his ability, his skill, his drive. No, no, no. That did nothing for Lee. It was the American way that gave him everything. Like, this is the kind of nationalist dick-sucking that just ruins an entire nation. Now, this is interesting. 
Uh, this tells me this conversation didn't go very well. Uh, pointing at Lee, he noted that Lee has to live with the shame of sitting quietly while other Again, I guarantee you it's because this guy said a lot of stupid shit and Lee, like, told him to shut up or, like, counteracted what he said with some actual information that wasn't based in, like, Fox News and OAN. And then he's, like, too stupid to fucking put it out there. Others took an axe to a legacy they didn't create and destroyed what generations that came before them in the comic medium bled to get to give us. Uh, El Taib closed by... If, if the motto ruined the legacy, fuck the legacy, it's, it's trash. I'm just, if, it's, if the motto made the legacy, it was trash. We don't need it. I'm just putting it out there. It was crappy anyway. It had no real grounding to stand on if that's all it had. Calling Lee one of his childhood heroes and thanking him for the opportunity he was granted years ago at Wildstorm. What are the odds that Lee was like on a phone call during this entire thing, didn't hear a word, and just kind of like nodded? In conclusion, he stressed again he doesn't want fans contacting or going after Lee. He believes he is ultimately a good dude, not one of the far-left weirdos. I would also point to like this is his bias showing. Like, normal people don't talk like this. This is like indoctrination shit. Yeah, and he's, you know, cashing a check. He doesn't have to. Jim Lee is freaking Jim Lee. Jim Lee could leave DC tomorrow and go start his own company. And he would do so much better. And he'd, have, he'd be able to look at himself in the mirror, I think, a little bit easier every day. I would say the fact that he hasn't should be a big indication of, like, how he sees the comic book industry right now. Like, he's okay with it. Maybe his politics don't align with yours and he doesn't care. Or maybe he's just not a dumb fuck. Maybe he actually knows what comic books are about, unlike you and this idiot. Too. But maybe he's just biding his time until he retires. I don't know. I, I'm actually shocked that Jim Lee, of the Image Founders, that Jim Lee seemingly was the first one. I think he was the first one to nope out. Like, yeah, this business thing's real hard. Let me just sell Wildstorm. Let me just sell it to D.C. This business thing is kind of hard. I don't want to do that. Anyway, uh, speaking of being held hostage... Keep in mind, these guys are worth $500 million. Diamond, uh, hit by ransomware attack. Who cares about Diamond? Who's uh, What? Diamond Comic Distributors and Alliance Game Distributors were hit by a ransomware attack on Friday, which took down their websites and affected order processes and communications. The company informed at least some stakeholders on Sunday. Our IT department and a team of third-party experts are working around the clock to address these issues and restore full operation. Why does he laugh at the word experts? Does he not know they exist? Is he one of those idiots that like denies anything that comes out of an expert because he thinks they're wrong because his worldview and his feelings matter more than the facts of the matter? Operations. Are you sure they're not just doing it just to drum up some sympathy? Because Diamond's kind of like, eh. Ransomware is a form of malware that locks access to data unless a ransom. Five hundred million dollars. I would like to see his checkbook because if he's so much better than Diamond, he should be able to outspend them, right? Like he should have more than $500 million in his checkbook, correct? Or is his dinky little comic not selling enough for that? It's mispaid. Why is a company like that? How are they? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. A number of high profile attacks have taken place this year, disrupting meat production, gasoline distribution, and other functions run by large companies. But to go after Diamond? To go after a comic book distributor that's already on death's door? Like, you sure they're not doing this themselves? I don't know. It, it's See, it doesn't fit with the narrative he's created, so he has to make up like a conspiracy theory to justify it. Oh, no, 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 no. They're, they're, they're bankrupt. They're totally destroyed. They have nothing left. There's no reason to attack them. It must have been a false flag. Like, that is the insanity of these people. Weird. Survey reported by New York Magazine found that over uh, half of ransomware victims this year paid to regain access to their info. Only a quarter of them regained full access. Uh, some functions are continuing. While some of our systems remain down, rest assured, we're continuing to ship product and fill orders to the greatest extent we can. It's kind of weird that of all the industries that you're going to hit, you're going to... Like, he's, he's chomping his gowls. That's what I'm, I'm hearing somebody who's, like, chomping his gowls. Or he's like chewing on hard candy or something. Hit the flailing comic book direct market and a distributor that's having problems because it keeps losing clients to other distributors. And they're gonna be like, well, we can't fulfill orders because, you know, oh, our system's down, ransomware, yeah, that's it.
I don't know. Or this happens to everybody at some point and it happened to them. You know, Occam's razor dictates that the simplest solu- the simplest um, explanation is the r- correct one, right? You know, he's, th- he's seeing zebras everywhere instead of just thinking horses when he's standing in the middle of Montana. I'm whole damn industry is being held hostage. It is. You don't know what that word means. Comics is being held hostage. Um, people just need to just, I don't, I don't even know what to tell you. Walk away. Just walk away from it. Don't play the game. I mean, I wish you would walk away, please. Like, let people who actually care, like, step in and take care of news and stuff, not some idiot who's just crying that his worldview is no longer the most popular in the world. You know, it's the only way things are going to change. You know, no money, no no industry. Just walk. 1.28 billion in 2020. Walk away. And I think a lot of people are going to walk away. I don't think you can save the mainstream comic book industry. I think. I mean, they're gaining more profits by the year. We saw that at the beginning, right? Like, again, with the narrative. Like, he, he has a narrative. It has to be pushed. You know, damn the facts, damn the logic, damn um, the reality. The narrative comes first and foremost at all times, and that is these guys do things I don't like, therefore they must be being destroyed because my opinion is the correct one, and um, no amount of evidence and facts to prove that wrong will change the facts of the matter to me because me fifis mean more than um, the reality. 